Hey there, my name is Provis and welcome to Buggos. This is a game where you build out a hungry, hungry hive of aliens that are seeking to purge the human scum from their new planet. At its heart, this is ultimately a simple base builder with an auto battler mechanic built in. I'll show you what I mean. Let's go to this creepy technology center. Now here we have ourselves a little hive where we are able to spawn some different bugs. Depending on what you've unlocked as you play the game, we have swarmers, builders, and spiners. The first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is just start placing down a bunch of little pustules that I have unlocked between levels. And this is gonna allow us to start generating some extra resources. The resources in question are called nutrients. You need nutrients for every bug that is going to spawn. The more bugs that die that have to be replenished, the more nutrients you are going to need. These pustules generate more nutrients and therefore having a lot of them just means that you can continue to sustain unlimited spawn rates a lot better. And then I'll go ahead and place down an extra hive, or two, or three, just so I can go ahead and have more eggs, which are going to start spawning. And let's go ahead and retoggle on these swarmers and spiners so that they can start to hatch along with their brothers. There we go. Now, if I zoom out, where are the humans? Aha! The humans are up over here. They are surrounded by many walls and probably believe themselves to be safe. The absolute fools. Okay, so what I'm going to do here then is set up a couple of things. One, let's set up some spore artillery. These are going to start shooting the humans throughout the entirety of the map, weaken them up a little bit, and knock down some of their walls. Just like so. Incoming barrage goes boom. There we go. Eventually it'll take some of these things down. Technically, could you win the game with nothing but artillery? Yeah, absolutely you could. It wouldn't be as fun, but you absolutely could. Hey, look, the humans are sending an attack force. Let's go ahead and say all forces move in this general direction. Now, your bugs aren't exactly the most intelligent of creatures. They don't really follow a very clear path as much as this is the general direction I want to go. We'll kind of wander over there, and then if we find an enemy, we'll go ahead and attack them. So case in point, let's go ahead and move these guys over here, and you're going to start seeing the swarm going off in this direction. If they find enemies, like these walls and stuff, they'll run in there, and they'll start taking a few chomps. The swarmers, of course, are your melee units. The spiners, the little green guys, are my range units. So we're just going to start clearing out this little group of the humans. Now, the humans have some spawners of their own. They look like these buildings right here, and you may have just seen a bunch of humans pop out, including some of these tanks and so on. This is ultimately your objective. Take out the human reinforcements, and you can easily take them all down. Destroy all enemy houses or other buildings and all of their units, and you win the map, and you can move on with your life. Now, here's one particular problem with your swarm. Because they're somewhat stupid and they have very low health, if your enemy is able to start splitting them off and picking them off one by one, they aren't exactly all very well coordinated now, are they? Hold on, what are you guys doing over here? Get in here, hold on, hold on, hold on. This little guy thinks he can just shoot my artillery. That is extremely rude and we aren't gonna stand for it. Goodbye, sir. Anyway, because you are gonna be constantly sending in new reinforcements, it does mean that your bugs kind of get all spread out and it does take a lot of, you know, run forward, now retreat, everyone coordinate, and then everyone run forward together as one death ball all over again, right? That's kind of how this is supposed to work. There are some tricks in order to make this a little bit more um, bearable, though. And by the way, they are trying to attack me over here, so we'll just go ahead and protect the hives. Um, there are ways to make this more bearable, mainly by knowing when to delete some of your buildings and move them further forward. I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. There we go. All right. So over here, for example, I expect the humans are going to keep coming through here in massive waves. I want to place down hives in this general area. Why? Because as long as I am constantly spawning my bugs on the front line, then the reinforcement time is significantly reduced. That obviously would make a whole lot of sense. So let's go ahead and start gradually moving my bugs in that direction. See, this is kind of what I'm talking about over here. These bugs are so incredibly spread out that the enemy is able to overall pick them off one by one. And as long as they have things like flamethrowers and tanks who are very cost efficient on their part, and they keep spawning in units forever, then this becomes a stalemate, right? And there's gonna be a huge splatter of bug guts and uh, not a lot of victory for me. However, now that we're starting to get some hives set up where we're able to get reinforcements into the fray immediately, notice the line is gradually starting to push them back. This is what we were looking for. And it's why you shouldn't be afraid to place now new spawners up to the front line. Now, the thing is, you have to go through and delete some of your hives that were in the back line. I've already done that down here, but now that I don't need these anymore, I'll go ahead and use the delete key and delete these as well. And you might be thinking, well, why on earth would you do that? Why not keep your spawners forever? Because they don't spawn these guys depending on where the enemies are located, right? They try to spread them out equally regardless of where the spawners are. So if your spawners are way down over here, well, then guess what's going to happen? You're just going to have a lot of spread out units. Whereas if you get rid of the old ones and keep them all clustered here, well, look at this. My swarm is starting to gradually push forward and devour everything in sight. This is what we were looking for. 
Now, there are other things that we can do that are going to help with this. So, for example, I have unlocked the ability to place down eggs for some titans. Gigantic bugs that, once properly hatched, are going to be able to absorb a huge number of hits from the humans and tank while my DPS starts to move forward. Not sure if these guys are going to last long enough for that to be a thing, but let's see if these eggs can hatch. While they do that, in the bottom left, I want to draw attention to a couple of other things. So we have a meter right here, which represents the maximum number of bugs you're allowed to have in the current distribution. Right, the larger this number is, the more things you can have on the field, the more you can death ball your enemies. There's also a couple of other buttons. So right now we are producing 25% more nutrients, but I'm sitting on loads of nutrients thanks to these pustules, so who even cares? What we could do is spawn 35% more bugs so long as we have nutrition available, or increase their attack damage by one. Which I'll go ahead and do because, well, I'm having no problems keeping on top of my maximum capacity, and we have plenty of nutrients, we might as well just do a lot more damage. Here come the Titans! Alright, go forth, my bugs! Absorb all their hits! Oop, okay, they're dying off fairly quickly, but we're still able to keep pushing forward. I say that. There's so many flamethrowers that we found a new stalemate. Tell you what, though, while we could attack from different directions and try to flank them, these guys are so inefficient to doing so, that's usually not really worth it. Instead, build forward hives. Again, keep pushing the spawning line forward. Yeah, look how many bugs are back over here, right? This doesn't make sense. Why would I want these guys over here? Get rid of all these spawners, and there won't be any over here. They'll all be over here, pushing the line, as they should. And if you want to say, hey, I don't need any of these dang builders anymore, go ahead and turn these off. That means we'll spawn nothing but military units and just keep pushing forward. We're getting this close to the enemy spawners. Once these suckers are down, then the rest of the map will fall pretty quickly. There you go, spawners are down. Now all we have to do is clear out the rest of the human forces, destroy all their buildings, and the swarm will have true victory. This is very reminiscent of something like the Zerg from StarCraft. I am aware of that. I mean, obviously you have kind of the creep on the ground, you have your spore crawlers, you've got your hypes, you've got your eggs. Right, but the whole point really is just like create huge swarms of uh, bugs and then sort of generally tell them where to go. And as long as you have the right composition of bugs, you've got the right upgrades, or maybe you know when to pull back, when to regroup, and when to push forward in a death ball, you'll eventually win against almost any threat. It just takes a while. Some games can take you easily like 30 plus minutes if you haven't set yourself up correctly. In this case, it took me 13 minutes. I lost 8,000 bugs and 41 buildings, but that's mostly like turrets and stuff, who even cares? And we killed a bunch of humans, but victory is ours. Now, we get two evolution points for our victory on this particular level. In the bottom left, we can go to evolutions over here. And this opens up what is effectively a great talent tree with ways to upgrade your swarm. You'll start off with ways of upgrading your swarmers, right? Extra damage, extra speed, extra health and armor. We'll even be able to use something called influence to make them respond better to your attack pins so they don't just kind of wander off as much. Better coordinated attacks. That's also going to lead to things like the spiners. You already saw those guys for the range units. We can get the builder. We can work up here to get the titan. I'm about to unlock the swarm mother, a mobile breeding colony, which makes a lot of sense to me. Produce a whole bunch of swarmers, right? We could also boost their attack speed, or we could boost up the... We could start with three swarm mothers, I guess. These are all things we could do. So let's pop into this civilian power reactor, for example, and we'll just give this another try. Let's see what these can do. Of course, I'm going to set up, once again, a whole bunch of these pustules, because I know that I'm going to need a lot of nutrition. And we're going to turn off all other spawns for a moment, just to make sure we have plenty of builders so we can get this set up nice and quick. All right, there we go. This should be enough to kind of get things moving along comfortably. Lots more builders than I really need at the moment, but that's fine. Most of the enemy is going to be sending in a couple little things of their own. We could start... Where are those swarm mothers? I want to see some of those. Do we see any? I don't see any swarm mothers yet. Where are the mobile units? I was promised there are swarm mothers. Oh, there's a couple. Okay, if we turn off everything else, this ensures that these guys get spawned the way we want them to. So I'm curious what these guys are going to be able to do here. They say that they had swarms, right? So um, what do they spawn? Are these going to be like the, uh, what are they called? Swarm hosts from StarCraft 2? I imagine they're going to be kind of like that. Honestly, it looks like they just keep spawning more of these little purple swarmer guys. Okay, so literally mobile spawners. Now this might be a bit of a game changer because this is a way of getting forward all of those reinforcing spawning points that I was talking about without relying on the hives. So what I'll do then is just tell my swarm mothers to stay over here where it's safe, and then all swarmers just keep moving forward. And in theory, as long as we have the nutrition to make this work, we're just gonna start winning this by attrition kind of as is. Now, of course, I'm not gonna have any spiners to go along with that, and that's sad, because I like the spiners, so... I mean, I want to do that long term, but there you go. Yeah, I mean, you can see from the green blood spatter here, this is effectively where the stalemate line is. So the swarm mothers aren't good enough on their own, as long as they've got enough flamethrowers and everything else. 
The swarmers still fall pretty darn quickly. All right, definitely right to go ahead and start moving the hives forward then. Shouldn't need too much more effort. All we gotta do is push up to these last spawners. There's one up over here and then one over here. Take this one out. I think this line collapses pretty quickly. And then we just go ahead and push our hives forward into this general area and make one last stand. Well, that took me 12 minutes and 30 seconds. All right, I mean, that's not too bad. It's two more evolution points for me. Let's go down to our evolutions and see what I might want to pick up. Let's see, we could start working toward the Boom Slug or the Wasp, right? Still other types of bugs that we haven't unlocked at this point. I mean, yeah, there's plenty of ways to spend your evolution points for sure. I'll go ahead and increase the health of all of my swarm. Uh, could go for a bit of recycled uh, nutrients every time a buggo dies. Well, that should pretty much guarantee that I never run out of nutrients for the entirety of the game. So sure, I'll go ahead and pick that sucker up. Now, as fun as this is, right, in its kind of not super challenging way, there is a way to completely break the game that I've discovered, and it means that all these cool tools that we have at our disposal through the evolution tree are completely useless. You only need to work toward the builder, and that's pretty much it. Get to the builder and then upgrade it in almost every way you can. Efficient builders are a good idea. Better pustules, a good idea. Get the spore launchers, right? Work toward the spore artillery, and you can win any level at any difficulty with only one unit. I'm jumping into the military academy over here, and I'm gonna turn off every bug except for the builder. And then we're gonna go ahead and build a ton of pustules and a ton of hives, because I'm about to use up a lot of nutrients. Now here's the thing, right? Every time your builder sacrifices themselves in order to start building a structure, that kind of resets your overall cap of how many units you can have. Which means as long as you have enough hives and you have enough nutrients, your hives can be spawning almost an infinite number of builders in extremely short periods of time as long as you keep having things to build. So for example, there are enemy tanks on their way. I'll tell you what, I'll just go ahead and quickly set up a whole bunch of these turrets and look how quickly my builders are respawning in order to get in here and start building these suckers out. And because it costs me nothing, except for builders, to build some structures, well, I've got an infinite and super easily generated static defense, right? I mean, like, Nothing can get in here. I can rebuild my turrets literally faster than they can send in units to get me. But wait, there's more. What this really means is I can build what is effectively a highway of turrets and such, kind of like this, and tell all these buggos to start going this direction. And here they go. They're going to start spawning. They're going to all run over here and create this highway. And as long as we keep spawning bugs very rapidly, they can keep this sucker rebuilt so quickly that we can shred through literally anything heading toward me with no effort whatsoever. Now, if the respawn admittedly is a little bit slow, no problem. Just, you know, place a couple more hives over here. Look at how quickly we were able to shred through those walls. This gets even better. Watch, with all these new uh, hives being placed, I'm gonna go ahead and delete a couple over here, replace a couple more over here, just so we have plenty of things being built up. And then, hey, I would like you to go ahead and build up turrets like all the way up their spawner. And they'll do it. Look how quickly these turrets are about to go down, right? Look at them start shredding through all the tanks and stuff. And because I have a talent where any building that gets destroyed gets quickly rebuilt, or at least marked to get rebuilt, my builders are swarming so quickly. Look how fast they're spawning. And now we have a highway of turrets that just knocked out the spawner and it took basically seconds. Yeah, basically what I'm saying is the builder is the best unit in the game and it's not even close. Um, you can defeat any threat in record time using just a bunch of builders. So here come all the builders with my new forward settled hives and oh look, we're just building out more of these turrets, all these spore launchers right up to their spawner. Give it a little bit of time, and oh look, we're already starting to hit it. Yep, this sucker's gonna go down in just a little, there it goes. All right, say goodbye to that spawner. And if I wanna place down more hives, no problem. They build up extremely quickly, and with new hives, they can build, guess what? Even more hives in record freaking time. Literally the most important thing is just to make sure you go back and delete your old hives so you're constantly moving the stream, the endless stream of builders as far to the front line as you can, as quickly as possible. And yeah, no, I mean, there, there's no competing against this. And look at my nutrients, they're completely fine. Who even cares? Nothing can stop me here. We'll just go ahead and place down over here. We'll forward settle some more hives, which means they start spawning here even faster. We'll go through and delete the old ones so they come through even faster. Make sure that you move your flag over here so your builders aren't wasting time in the wrong spot. 
And now they are start rushing forward, and we're gonna place down a whole billion much more turrets, and yep, now we're gonna start burning through this entire group of humans. <laughs> yep, there goes one of their tanks, there goes that, and in six minutes, a much higher difficulty map just went down using that strategy, and I could have gone even faster. That's considered to be a maximum difficulty level, by the way. Let's go ahead and jump into another one of these, and I'll show you how it works again. First things first, make sure you have an almost endless supply of nutrients. That's going to be very important for you. Also settle down at least a couple more of these hives. Turn off everything except for builders, because nothing else is about to matter. The faster you get your nutrients and your hives online, the faster you'll be able to unlock unlimited, super rapid, speedy builders. There we go. With that taken care of, we start moving forward the highway of our turrets. And within just a few short moments, we should see an almost unstoppable wave of death approaching. Hooray! Say goodbye to your stupid turrets. They can't save you. What about over this direction? Same exact thing. I'm just going to go ahead and rapidly build out some turrets. They're going to knock out these walls. They're going to take out this turret over here. And all these little guys are going to be dead as well. This is actually going to be a really short level now that I think about it because uh, this is a pretty small group over here. Perfect. This will be where I attack them then. Let's quickly set up a whole bunch more hives. And here they come. Just building this out. There goes one spawner. All right. That's one taken down. Keep going, boys. You want to spawn even closer to the front line? Oh, don't mind if I do. Hey, look, more spawn hives are built. This one's built. This one's built. There we go. Look at that. More hives. Build more hives even faster. And we'll just go ahead and delete a couple of these to make sure that all the spawns are happening at the front line that I wanted. And here come even more turrets. Obviously, there are some upgrades that make your turrets even better, right? They have a little bit more range and stuff like that. That's obviously a thing you want to do in order to make this strategy more effective. But even with no other upgrades than simply having access to builders and spore crawlers, you don't need anything else. You just win. So look at that. We've cleared out all their spawners, so that's it. Now we just move over here, and if I want to, I could just go ahead and keep building more of these turrets to make it even easier to take out the tanks. Or I could just go ahead and say, hey, you know what? I wouldn't mind having a few of these swarmers. Oh, wait, not even point. Yeah, that's done. Four minutes. Boom. That was a nine out of ten difficulty level. <laughs> and then once you finish with all those levels, you move on to the next zone, and here's a whole bunch more levels that you can finish. There's affluent human cities and their capital government building and religious sites and so on. Hooray. Honestly, it's kind of a shame because it's a pretty fun game. I mean, yeah, again, it's not like it's super challenging, but it's pretty engaging until you realize that you can just cheese every single level very early on and your strategies don't need to change and you don't need to unlock the Titan or the Wasp or the Warrior or the Defender or anything high level. You just use the builders and all the static defenses in the world. You build them so quickly that you win every level. It's no challenge whatsoever. Kind of ruins a lot of the game. There should probably be some restrictions on that, so you can have only a limited number of static buildings at any given time. But even then, it just increases the micromanagement, and you can use the exact same strategy. So how do you fix this? I don't even know. I think we just kind of broke the game. Is this how the spiffing Brit feels all the time? I don't know. Probably. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If so, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe. Make sure you hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.